Hello everyone and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, where today I am so excited to be bringing you official images of the LEGO Wizarding World collectible minifigure series. This series features 16 minifigures based off of the Harry Potter franchise, as well as 6 based off of the film Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. These figures will release on August 1st, 2018 in blind bag form and retail for $4 each. Starting off with the figures, we'll start with the first of two Harrys included in the series, this being Invisibility Cloak Harry, who I think looks pretty great. He has the same new Harry hairpiece that we're getting in all of the new sets, as well as his face print, which has a new expression for him where he has a smile that shows some teeth. Personally, I do prefer the normal face that comes in the retail sets, but this is a fine variant. As you can see, Harry is wearing pajamas with some orange sort of slippers, I guess, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, he comes with a brown wand, but more exciting is his invisibility cloak, which looks to be a new fabric piece that is sort of chromed on the outside, and on the inside it seems to be dark red with lots of nice sort of stars and moons printed on it to make it seem very magical. So yeah, pretty awesome figure. And the second Harry we get is also pretty awesome. This is based off of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and you can instantly see that he's in Hogwarts robes, with the, um, well, just printed onto the torso, you have the open robes over the sweater and the little Gryffindor crest, but more excitingly, if you look down to his legs, which do have just continuation of the robes printed on, but look at the legs, they're, they're intermediate legs, they're four plates tall in between short legs and normal legs, they're poseable shorter legs, they're so good, where have these been for the last ever? So yeah, those are pretty amazing parts to get. Harry's face is basically an aged-up version of the current Harry head that we're getting this year. Or in the main sets, just aged up, but it looks pretty good. And his hairpiece is just the Ron Weasley hairpiece from 2010, but now in black, which is pretty cool. Um, it was this, this Lego actually used this same hairpiece in Lego Dimensions, and I feel so it does work pretty well for Goblet of Fire, which is the film this figure is based off of. So yeah. And then he comes with a dark brown wand and headwig. And I believe I've mentioned in a previous video, but just to recap, all of the new wizard wands, they all come packaged in sets of two, like how Lego does keys and knives. So that means that each figure will come with two wands, which is amazing. But anyway, yeah. Figure three is Ron Weasley, again based off of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And as you can see, he has the same legs as Harry, but the robes are now opened up and far more messy. His shirt is very wrinkled, and his tie is undone. I think the face print isn't as accurate as the 2010 Ron face, but... It still looks pretty good, but the hairpiece, it's an orange Han Solo hairpiece, and honestly, I think that for Goblet of Fire, this is a pretty brilliant choice. It looks pretty spot on. Um, He comes with a brown wand and scabbers for accessories, even though he shouldn't have scabbers in Goblet of Fire, but eh, it's alright. Next figure we have is Hermione Granger, who again, Goblet of Fire, um, she has a different torso printing to show that her robes are neatly clasped together. And she also has different leg printing because as the ins the red interior of her robes is showing. So that's nice. Um, I think the face print looks definitely a bit more like Emma Watson than the, than the younger Hermione does. And I do feel as though this is the best likeness to Emma Watson Lego has made to date. The hairpiece is just the pop star hairpiece in brown, which is pretty good. I think it's the best you can get at for this era. Anyway, she comes with a tan wand and Crookshanks, I guess. Who, I'll be honest, I really don't like this Crookshanks. Crookshanks really needed a new mold. I mean, Crookshanks is, is so much bigger and poofier than the standard Lego movie cat, so... 
This just looks wrong. I mean, this mold would have worked pretty well for Mrs. Norris, though, who unfortunately Lego didn't make. So yeah, that's a bit... But yeah, still a pretty nice figure, even if Crookshanks is a bit wrong. Next up, though, we have Neville Longbottom, who is based off of the Herbology class from the Chamber of Secrets. He, again, has the new intermediate leg piece, but now in plain black with no printing. He has sort of a protective coat on for Herbology class and some brown gloves. I think the face print for Neville here is spot on. The mouth is very well done, as well as the chin. He just looks very nervous, which perfectly encapsulates the character of Neville. The hair is just the headphones piece, but recolored into dark brown, with the headphones now being recolored into dark tan earmuffs. He comes with a dark brown wand, but he also comes with a mandrake, which actually features two new parts. You have the leaf piece on top, and then you also have the mandrake itself, which looks pretty weird. I mean, it's a new mold, so I don't know why LEGO couldn't just mold it to look more like a full mandrake instead of just being a head that has some arms for no for some reason. I mean, it looks really weird, but I mean, I can live with it. it it's alright, just a bit terrifying. Yeah, and then he also has a dark orange pot, which is pretty nice. Next figure is probably the least exciting of the whole series, Quidditch Draco. Personally, this figure is pretty lame to me. I mean, he just has the same torso print as the as the Slytherin Quidditch players in the $40 Quidditch set. And his face print is nearly the same as his face in the Great Hall, except here it looks even less like Draco. And yeah, I mean, like, he comes with the snitch, which is cool, comes with a wand, which is cool, comes with a short cape and dark green, which is cool, comes with a dark green broom, which is awesome. But, like, the figure itself is nothing to write home about, and if I'm being completely honest, I would have much preferred to have just gotten Draco in, like, normal robes, sort of like what we got for Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the series. Would have been nice to get Draco in the same format, so we would have maybe a Slytherin set of robes, but, oh well... Still an alright figure, just not very exciting, not very unique. Next figure, on the other hand, is very cool. It is Albus Dumbledore, this time based off of Michael Gambon's portrayal of the character from Pr Prisoner of Azkaban onward. And starting off, he has a new double-molded hair hat combo with the blue hat, which has both... S with, well... I can definitely see gold printing, and it looks like there might be silver on, on it, but I can't tell for sure. But yeah, so that's pretty awesome. The face print looks alright. Interestingly, he has a new beard mold, which is odd, because personally I feel as though the Vitruvius beard could have worked just fine, but I don't mind getting a new mold. It's just sort of an, an odd thing. Um, I feel as though the torso and inlet... Well, torso and skirt piece. I mean, it represents robes, but it is just the new dress piece. Anyway, I think it looks nice. You have some nice patterning going on there. And he comes with a dark tan wand and a silver plate with some swirls on it, which, of course, represents the pensieve. Next figure has to be one of my favorites. It's the new Luna Lovegood. And to start with, she has a brand new hair piece that looks perfect, I mean, the, and then you have the face print, which has that perfect level of dismissiveness that we all love about Luna, perfectly captured. The torso print is actually very similar to the original Luna minifigure, but I think it, it looks a bit better. I like how the buttons are gold now, and overall it does look a bit, a bit more interesting, because obviously most of the outlines are now in black, which... Obviously contrasts more than just having the outlines in dark pink like on the original. Um, she does have a purple bag over her shoulder, which is nice. She comes with the new intermediate short legs in what I'm guessing is just a standard blue, because most of them are covered up by her skirt. And the skirt itself is, j is a fully fabric piece now, which is nice. And yeah... Luna's accessories are a brown wand and a 2x3 printed tile with the quibbler. And this figure is pretty great. If I had to have one complaint, 
It's that I'm not, while I love getting the intermediate short legs in another new color, I don't know if they really should have been used here because um, by Half-Blood Prince, which this figure is based off of, Luna was about, um, she probably would have been around 15 years old, and I feel as though by that point she was tall enough to just have normal legs. But I mean, it's not really a complaint, even as I do prefer getting the intermediate legs, just sort of an odd thing. Anyway, next figure we get is Voldemort, who has some very simple torso and, again, skirt printing, like Dumbledore's skirts just for robes. The face, though, is pretty great. Um, it finally looks like Ray finds Voldemort. Glad that we got rid of that awful smile that we've had since 2010. Um... He has a plain white wand, which is pretty neat. And then his other accessory is his serpent, Nagini, who is a brand new mold with a bit of black printing for the eyes, and Nagini just looks pretty awesome here. Much bigger than the old snake. Anyway, next figure is Professor Phileas Flitwick. One of, probably one of the most accurate figures in the series. He has a brand new mold for his hairpiece, which looks perfect. He has a new face print that is much more accurate than the old one. Mm. Now the bow tie to make it seem extra large is the Lego Batman movie piece rather than just being printed. The torso is very similar to the old one, except the colors are changed up, and again, the bow tie is no longer there. He has plain black short legs, but in between those and the torso, you can see a fabric coat tail piece. And then for accessories, he has a brown wand and a megaphone. Next figure is another one of my favorites, Professor Sybil Trelawney, who has a brand new hair mold to get sort of the hair wrap and the very frizzy, messy hair. Um... Her face print, I feel, is pretty much perfect. You can see the the eyes being enlarged and magnified by the glasses, which is very good to see. And I feel that the mouth especially is just perfect for the actress. Um, she has the new skirt piece again, and, I f and like, you have some nice patterns running through the torso and skirt. You have, but overall, you can see the detail on there. Nothing really calls out especially on that. But then her accessories are a dark brown wand and a new mold for a teacup on a saucer. The saucer is printed. And I'm curious to see if the teacup is removable from the saucer or if it's all one piece. But yeah, pretty cool. And if I'm correct, that, that new teacup saucer piece, or maybe just the teacup if they're removable, will also be coming with Umbridge in the upcoming Bricktober Harry Potter set. But anyway... Next figure is one of the weird ones, I'd say. Um, it's Dobby, one of my favorite characters, and one that we can all agree is pretty awesome. However, I feel as though something went a bit off with the face on this Dobby. I mean, like, I'm not sure which I prefer, this one or the 2010 version, because I feel as though the mouth being printed is so much better than having it be molded. But on the same note, I feel as though having it will look weird to just have the eyes sunken into his head. I much preferred when they were raised slightly. I don't know. I mean, he, I, I guess this one has a bit more emotion to him, but I don't know. The head just looks weird. Then the torso is, in a rare scenario, actually less detailed than the 2010 version. But honestly, I think it looks a lot better here. I mean... The old one had so much dirt and wrinkles in it that it, it it just looked weird. I think this looks much more like a pillowcase that he's wearing. And interestingly, Dobby has double-molded short legs, which are new. And when I say that, I mean not double-molded like the, um, the Simpsons, like the Bart had double-molded legs. I mean double-molded like how normal legs are double-molded. So that's pretty unique for him with the tan and the flesh tone. His accessories are Riddle's Diary and, of course, a 1x2 printed with a sock. And this time you can actually put the sock into the diary, so the fact that the, that the sock is printed on a tan 1x2 will finally not look weird, which is pretty great. Next figure is Cedric Diggory, Triwizard Champion, and... 
in my opinion. He looks pretty good. He has the Bruce Wayne hairpiece from the Lego Batman movie in regular brown, which I think is new. I think the face print looks pretty good for the actor. The torso is nice with the yellow and black and the Hogwarts crest. Um, I really don't like the gray legs, though. I feel as though, like, I'm fine with them not having printing, but I feel as though black would have been much more accurate. But anyway, he comes with a brown wand and a printed trophy that represents the Triwizard Cup. I like the ridging around the top, though I'm not sure about the basic font used to spell tri wiz ard I don't know about that part, and I don't know. I feel as though maybe, maybe the printing should have been in, like, a blue instead of just black, or maybe a, that's maybe gunmetal silver, but I don't know. I feel as though blue might have looked better, but and nonetheless, still a pretty neat figure. Next up is a figure that should have been pretty neat, but unfortunately has one major problem. It's Cho Chang. And to start with, she comes with that great owl, which I just think is pretty cool. As far as I can tell, it seems to just be a recolor of the brown owl that LEGO made back in 2010 for a couple sets. It looks to be the same print, just on, a, just on nougat instead of brown. But it's pretty good. Um... She also comes with a brown wand, and moving on to the figure itself, you can see that first off, Ravenclaw Torso, finally, in 2018, we have house uniforms for all four houses. Gryffindor, we have Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Seamus. Slytherin, we have Draco. Hufflepuff, we have Susan Bones, and here we have Cho Chang for Ravenclaw, which is awesome. She also has the intermediate short legs again, with a skirt over them. I'll be honest, I, f I feel so the skirt could look better, maybe with some printing on it, I don't know, it's alright though. But what isn't all oh and also she has the black sl spooky girl hair, but what isn't alright is the fact that Cho Chang has such dark skin. Cho Chang does not have dark skin like this. The actress that portrayed he her, and therefore the character I would hazard to guess, have have pretty much the same skin color as, say, Daniel Radcliffe, for example. Lego should have just gone with the light nougat color. This really isn't accurate at all, and it's sad, because, like, the face print looks so much like her. It's one of the best, and also simplest, but 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 through its simplicity, it it's almost one of the best likenesses I've ever seen to an actress, and it's just on the wrong color. It's kind of awful, really. But yeah, still a pretty nice figure, just super sad about the face. Another figure that might have some coloration problems is Dean Thomas. Alternatively, Lee Jordan. Yeah, no one knows who this guy is. Sites have listed him as both. We don't have official word from LEGO. I'm just going to go with Dean Thomas because he has shorter hair while Lee has dreadlocks. So, it, so, this is, so calling him Dean is less embarrassing to LEGO. Anyway, although he probably is Lee, but anyway, first off, the hairpiece, Finn hair and dark brown, they both had black hair, and again, Lee had dreadlocks, so let's hope to God this is supposed to be Dean, even though I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Lee, but yeah, so that's inaccurate, and then the skin color is also inaccurate, they both had darker skin than this. What is it with Lego messing up skin tones and owns a couple times in the series? Weird, but anyway... You, you can see that the printing is pretty nice on the torso. You have robes closed as well as a scarf. And the scarf does continue down onto the legs, which, so that's a new print. And then you get a dark brown wand and a Gryffindor flag. So pretty cool. Not sure who it's supposed to be. Either way, it's not too accurate. <sighs> eh. Next figure is pretty great, though. And it is the, actually the last figure based off of Harry Potter before we transition into Fantastic Beasts. This figure is Professor Alistair Mad-Eye Moody. And he looks pretty cool. New hairpiece. I think that the face print is pretty accurate. I like how the actual eye is done. Pretty cool. There are lots of scratches in the face. It's well done. The torso is pretty accurate with the sort of long trench coat over the many buckled jacket. The legs are double molded, so you have the coat continuing down, but then you also have pants. 
you have blue pants, but then I think it's a bit odd how on the one lay, how on one side you still have blue printed for part of the pants, but then you also have the metal foot. Which is a bit odd, I mean, I'm glad to see that they did double mold the, the silver, but like, shouldn't it have been silver all the way up? I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems a bit off to me. I mean, and if, and if it is supposed to be, like, and if he does have full pants, and then, like, shouldn't the other side be, like, a boot then? I don't know, just a bit odd there. But anyway, Moody does come with quite a few accessories. Pictured here are a dark brown wand and a walking stick, but he also comes with not pictured, and I can't show the picture because it's technically a leak, but anyway, with a flask of polyjuice potion and an alternate hairpiece, which I'm guessing would mean that he c that he has as an alternate face where he can become Barty Crouch Jr., which is pretty cool. But m transitioning into Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, the first figure we get is, of course, Newt Scamander, who looks pretty alright, in my opinion. He is an update of the Dimensions version, which was his main costume from the movie, so that's fine. Hate the hairpiece. Face isn't too accurate. But then, like, the torso is pretty similar to the Men Dimensions version, just definitely the printing is a lot crisper, and the colors are a bit better, and he has Picket coming out of his pocket, which is adorable. The legs printing is pretty similar, except now it's double-molded, which is nice. But yeah, um, the accessories, though, he comes with a burnt orange wand, a Niffler, and a new suitcase piece that has... a. It, it almost looks like the locks on top might be painted gold, which would be nice, but can't confirm that. And I bl and this piece is actually backwards, because there's the suitcase piece, but it can actually open up, because the other side is the Nexonite's book cover piece. We can see that better on another Fantastic Beasts figure. And I'm curious, because I'm guessing that we'll get printing on that book cover for the front of Newt's case, which would be pretty cool. And I'm also sort of curious if there's anything inside of the case. Maybe like a 1x2 printed tile with a Hufflepuff scarf. Which I kind of wish that... I kind of wish that Newt had had like a scarf on for like in the end of the movie. Would have made this guy feel a bit more unique, but even if he is pretty similar to Dimensions, he is still a nice update. Even if he doesn't feel too special. The same thing goes for the, for the next figure, Tina Goldstein who again is just the Dimensions version, just with some more, just with a few updated details. The big one here being the color. She now has a dark blue hat and a sand blue coat, which is more accurate than just having a dark gray hat and a light blue, I mean, and a light gray coat. And the coat is dual molded, just like on Newt, which is pretty cool, but... What isn't pretty cool is if you look to the hairpiece, you can see that it's still not double molded, which I wasn't entirely expecting them to change because it would because they probably would have had to make a new piece just to make up like, the same piece double molded if that makes any sense. But I'm annoyed because you can see here that or that the paint didn't go all over the hairpiece, and so some of the dark blue of the part is showing through on the hair. Which I mean, like, and if this is the this is the figure that Lego decided looked good enough to put in the official images, then I'm really worried about how, what this actual figure will look like, because, I mean, I'm hoping that this might have actually just been a one-off fluke, like the Dimensions Tina's looked very nice, but I'm very worried, I'll put it like that. Um, But yeah, I think the face print is pretty good, and her accessories, you have a, a normal brown wand and a hot dog, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Next figure is Mr. Jacob Kowalski, who has a who of course has his suit on. No no jack no um armor over at this time, which is good. I think the face print looks pretty perfect for Dan Fogler, and the hairpiece is the same, just the Bruce Wayne hairpiece in dark brown. His accessory is the suitcase again, with a couple of cookies inside. And also, and well, well, it's not visible in this image. You can, well, you can see it just a little if you look at the open book cover piece that forms the other side of the case. You can see a little bit that it that it does have printing for like the front of the case, which is pretty neat. But yeah, nice stuff. 
Next figure is Queenie Goldstein, who, in my opinion, is probably the best of the four fan or protagonists from Fantastic Beasts that we're getting that also appeared in the suitcase. Because first off, this one is the most different, as it's her in a completely different outfit, the, um, the dark blue one. But also, it's nice because it's just a very detailed minifigure. Um, the face print is great, since the suitcase didn't really come with a normal expression for Queenie. It's great to get one here. The torso has the dark blue outfit with the pink sort of undershirt. And it's printed to very well show her slender frame. Anyway, um, and then you also have the sort of shorter skirt, which um, you can, I feel as though the printing, printing on the legs is, is to sort of get the skirt skirt to be a bit shorter than the double molding. I feel so that that looks not that great to be honest, but it's all right. Um, her accessories are a black wand and this new mold for a strudel. Completely unnecessary, but I love it. Next figure is Percival Graves, although as you can see here, he currently has his alternate face for or where he's actually revealed to be Grindelwald. Yeah, um, you can see that it does come with a white hairpiece for if you want to complete that transformation for goofy-eyed, white, bleached mustache Grindelwald. But anyway, um, I am curious to see what his normal Graves face looks like. But anyway, you can see that for Graves, he does have the Widow's Peak hairpiece in black, but with some very great gray printing on the sides, which is nice. Um, the torso and legs are, aren't are that much to write home about. Like, they're nice, but not much else. And then he does just have a light tan wand. The very last figure in the series is probably one of the lesser figures. It's Credence Barebone, who, I mean, like, he's a nice figure, he's accurate, he's just not too interesting. I mean, no leg printing, which is fine, he didn't need any. The torso printing is nice, but overall rather planned, which it should be. The face print is pretty generic, which again, it, it really should be. And then the hair piece is just a bowl cut, which it should be. You see the problem? I mean, this guy isn't interesting, but... He really shouldn't be interesting. He's not a, an interesting looking character. He doesn't have a lot of detail going on. So like I'm perfectly fine with the figure. It just feels as though all, it, it almost feels like maybe, I don't know, maybe he should have been in like a normal set and they should have popped someone more interesting in here. But I mean, nonetheless, a very good minifigure. And you can see that his accessory is a one by two printed tile, for, which is a pamphlet for the second Salemers. And that is the Lego Harry Potter, or, well, I guess, Lego Wizarding World collectible minifigure series. It's a pretty great series. If I had to pick some of my favorites, they would probably be, um, Queenie I really like, Dumbledore is awesome, um, I really, like, I don't really have a specific preference of any of the main trio. I, my, I guess Hermione's pretty nice, though, um, Luna is just perfect, she t she improves every issue I had with the 2010 version, and then perfects some things that I hadn't even thought about. Um, Trelawney is fantastic. Neville is fantastic. Um, the Invisibility Cloak is great. Flitwick is great. I mean, like, honestly, nearly every figure here is awesome. If I had to pick a couple that I really am not the biggest fan of, though, um, I've already talked about how Dobby's face looks a bit weird. Dean Thomas and or Lee Jordan is definitely has the wrong skin and hair color, and if it's Lee Jordan, then he also has the wrong hairstyle. Um, Cho has the wrong skin color. Um, and then also Credence is just a bit boring, although there is really isn't much you could do to help that. So yeah, overall a pretty great batch of figs. Um, oh, also Draco, I literally forgot about him because he's forgettable. I mean, like, the only special thing beside the only exclusive parts are the face and the broom. But, I mean, hey, at least every minifigure series, I guess every licensed minifigure series has to have one minifigure that's barely unique at all. I mean, there was Hard Hat Emmett, then there was Arkham Joker, the the Disney series had Donald Duck, and, um, and the Batman, and the Ninjago movie series was, like, 50% re- 
repeats from the set. So, I'm fine with Draco, to be honest. Kind of wish, like, I feel as though it would have been, as I mentioned, to get him just in robes, but oh well. Overall, great series. Definitely going to pick as many of these up as possible. And please tell me down in the comments which figures are your favorites. Um, thank you all so much for watching this video, and I will see all of you in the next one. Farewell.